Hello guys, welcome to the video lecture on introduction to accounting. So our topic in today's video is about the term bad debts and general entry relating to bad debts. As you are aware of, we already have discussed about the terms debtors and bad debts in our previous video in the video series in introduction to accounting. Now who are debtors? Debtors are all those entities, individual organization who are supposed to pay you a certain sum of money. Since you are going to receive a certain sum of money, we term debtors to be part of a current asset. And since the more of debtors means more of an asset or an increase of an asset, debtors were always considered to be a debit balance. So debtors are all those people from whom you are going to receive money. We also have discussed about a term which was known as bad debt. Now bad debts means bad debtors. It means to say that debtors who previously you planned that they are going to pay you a certain sum of money. There might be a certain situation in which those debtors may not pay you the money which you are thinking or desired. Now bad debts might happen because of that the intention of the debtor is not to pay you money. Or secondly, the debtor has become insolvent or bankrupt or he doesn't have the financial resources to pay you back. So debtors and bad debts are two very important concepts in accounting and are interrelated while we try to solve journal entries relating to bad debt. Let's understand bad debt and the journal entry relating to bad debt with reference to certain examples. Example 1 states, an amount of rupees 50,000 from Peter remains irrecoverable. Now which means that you are not going to recover the amount of rupees 50,000 from Peter. Now previously Peter stands as a debtor because Peter was supposed to pay you 50,000. I'm doing in the books of SK, Edu Info and Co. So we are supposed to receive rupees 50,000 from Peter. But as on date, we understand that the amount stands irrecoverable. Therefore, we identify two account heads. Since the amount you are not going to receive from debtor and the debtor becomes bad, so we term it as a bad debt account. And secondly, the name of the personal account, which is Peter account. Now, bad debt account is a part, it's basically a loss. Because the amount of money which you are supposed to get from debtors, you are not getting that particular amount. So bad debt account is a part of a nominal account and it's a loss. And since it's a loss, it requires to be debited. Now, as I said, who are debtors? Debtors were those people who are supposed to pay you money. So it's an increase of an asset. And as per the debit and credit rule, you know, increase of an asset means debited. So debtors were debited. So in order to reduce the amount of data amount, or, or else you talk from the point of view of Peter as a debtor. So in order to reduce the amount, we require to credit or reduce the debtor's balance. Therefore, Peter account, which is a personal account, will be credit. Hence, bad debt being a loss is debited. And Peter account being a debtor, a decrease in the debtor, a decrease in the value of asset will be credited. Let's move on to the next example. Now, example 2 states, an amount of rupees 50,000 due from Peter, 20% received in cash rest irrecoverable. So, you have received part of the amount, that is out of 50,000 which was the total claim, you have received only 20% and rest 80% you are not getting that particular amount from your data, which stands irrecoverable, which means bad debt. So, we identify three account head here. One is bad debt account, second is Peter, as well as cash account which you have received 20%. Now, bad debt account being a part of nominal account, it's a loss required to be debited. Now, what is the amount of bad debt? If you have received 20% cash out of 50,000, 20% means 10,000 rupees. So, 50,000 minus 10,000, that means you are not going to get 40,000. That's a loss. So, bad debt account, loss is 40,000. Cash account will also be debited because you are getting cash. So, coming in, it's 10,000. And Peter, who was a debtor, was supposed to pay you 50,000. He has only paid you 10,000 right now and the rest is bad debt or irrecoverable. So you require to reduce data or you got to reduce the value of an asset and any reduction in the value of an asset will always be credit because as per the debit and credit rule, increase of an asset is debit and decrease of an asset is credit. So bad debt account required to be debited with 40,000. Cash account required to be debited with 10,000. And the personal account or the data, Peter, will be credited with rupees 50,000. Let's move on to the next example. Example 3 is almost same as example 2, but the transaction statement is a bit different. An amount of rupees 50,000 due from Peter, 20% in a rupee received. 
So this is normally a statement which comes normally in examination. Now what is 20 paisa in a rupee? If 1 rupee is the total claim, you are going to get 20 paisa, which means to say 20% only. So if your claim is 50,000, so if, you, if 1 rupee is the claim, you get 20 paisa. If your total claim is 50,000, then basically you are going to get 10,000. So the structure of the journal remains same. Bad debt being a nominal account, a loss will be debited with 40,000, which is the difference between 50,000 minus 10,000. Cash account, since you are receiving, coming in, required to be debited with rupees 10,000. And the data, who is Peter, decrease of an asset, decrease because the data's balance goes down. So it's a decrease in the asset. It has to be credited with rupees 50,000. I hope you have understood the basic concept relating to bad debt and journal entries relating to bad debt. Till then, thank you. Have a nice day.